So today we're gonna cover a brand that um, that you feel a personal affinity to. I do love um, that. You're like our resident wellness coach. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the brand that we're gonna be covering is uh, Viore. 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 Viore, yep. is that how you say it? Yep. Viore. Yep. Okay, so Viore, um, I've, you know, we've all, we've known it for a long time. I, I you know, it's actually been around for a while. Look, oh my God. It's on my water bottle. You're such a fan <laughs> boy. Oh my God. All right, yeah, so um, yeah, we've known a Viore, I, I mean, I've personally known a Viore for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I want, I, you know, I want to say it's one of the original, like, athleisure, like, like brands to come out, I guess. I mean, like, I, I want to say like Lululemon may have been like the spearhead of this. I feel like, like, I feel like Lu Lulu, like definitely. Lulu's, and like maybe like Uniqlo had a little bit to do with it. But like it's um, Vio Vio Viore, 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 yeah. Viore is like uh, it's um, it's kind of a mainstay in like the whole athleisure movement that's kind of taken yeah. over the fashion industry. And um, athleisure first, right? So um, yeah, kind of going down the list is um, yeah, so. Athleisure is, well, I mean, yeah, so athleisure is basically this new, like, subset of, like, the apparel industry that's been rapidly growing since, I want to say, like, 2012-ish? 2011-12, that's yeah. kind of, in the 2010s, at least, that's when it started really taking off. Mm -hmm. But it's, athleisure is basically, like, in a nutshell, is uh, basically the, um, I want to say the, the, the middle Venn diagram of activewear and sport. <laughs> activewear and sport. <laughs> <laughs> activewear and sportswear. It's, yeah. Sorry, it's fresh in my head. Yeah. Where, yeah, uh, whereas, like, um, so, like, I mean, let me, uh, let me actually define um, like all these terms that mm -hmm. we're throwing out. So, um, in the past, historically, I want to say from like the twentieth century. Uh, Men's fashion specifically, I'm not talking women's fashion here. I'm talking men's fashion specifically was divided into two different types of, you know, like subsex, yeah. I'll call it. Uh, one was called the clothing industry and the sportswear industry. Mm -hmm. Sportswear was basically the non formal, quote unquote, casual wear that mm -hmm. men used to wear back in like like the 20th century, so to speak, okay? Yeah. So like, and I, I know it's, it's very, um, it's confusing and it's like, you know, it's, yeah. But it's and, an industry term. Yeah, it's like an industry term yeah. and it, it's just kind of stuck around. So like, whereas like, like this type of look here, you see this look, like, the, while, whereas this type of look would be considered clothing. I have to laugh because that, that model right there, he's yeah. on every, he's, he's on Viore. Oh, is he really? I swear, oh, I, I mean, man. He's, yeah. on, he's on Viore, he's on Lulu, it's hilarious. This guy is just like the model for all clothing, it's hilarious. Well, I mean, I guess I guess he's like the new modern man. But like this, this whole look, this is considered sportswear. So it's basically like, you know, it's, it's what do these people who wear suits wear when they're not at the office mm -hmm. or if they're not at a formal event. Like weekend wear was defined as sportswear. Okay. And... You know, oh shit. Okay, cool. Yeah, and and so like that's kind of where like the like the differentiator comes in, and then came activewear. You know, and activewear was basically it was it was pushed by like you know first Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, mm -hmm. MJ blew it up like crazy, and like now it's just every professional athlete has some kind of activewear line that's coming out, yeah. and it but it's very um, but then activewear was always like, it was. I don't know the right word to say this, but it was it was very much a niche thing. It was like you wear active wear when you work out. Yeah. You know, so even like I'm I'm sure you guys know this too. Like even like back in like the '90s, even in like the 2000s, if you walk into a bar wearing like basketball shorts or like workout gear, they would turn you away. Yeah. You, you know, you it, it was a it was a huge faux pas. You know, like it's like you you couldn't do shit like that. Okay. And then comes like the 2010s. All right. So in the 2010s, what happened was was um. This, this started in the women on the women's side first mm -hmm. with like the yoga pants, yeah. you know, and all this stuff. But then athleisure started becoming a thing. And now athleisure is pretty much like the umbrella term for any like for basically just like casual sportswear sports. I'm going to use this term again. Yeah. Sportswear that is made with performance fabrics or with active fabrics or mm -hmm. like, you know, like. And and then and then now we're getting shit like workwear, which yeah. is something completely different. And now it's all get like like you kind of see like basically like sportswear used to be like very traditional like cotton and yarn dyes and like basically um, 
like there used to be like very strict rules for what you can and can't wear. Yeah. But then with like the advent of athleisure, what happens is is now like people are making sportswear silhouettes or like silhouettes you could go out to a bar in or any other like non-active activity. You know, they're making these silhouettes using like active functional fabrics. Yeah. And then that's bleeding into workwear, which is or outdoors wear, where it's basically just like kind of making like really heavy duty like construction, like construction worker, like blue collar fabrications and like kind of merging that with sportswear as well. And so you, right now, like we're kind of in this generation right now where we're basically seeing like functional fabrics becoming fashionable. For sure. Like the function of minimalism is coming to the forefront. Yeah, it's also like, yeah. super comfortable, right. feels great on right. you. And, right, I mean, I'm but, wearing, I'm wearing Lulu but, pants, at, but at the same time, it doesn't look like you're going to the gym, no. you know, right? But kind of, you in know, a way. in a way. It kind of lets you know that, you know, kind of lets everyone around you know I'm healthy, bro. I'm healthy. <laughs> yeah, right. you, know, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> All right, well anyways, uh, let, let's, uh, let's dive into Viore. Cool. That's weird. All right, strange. All right, so let's look at Viore. Right, let me see, just to make sure that. All right, so cool. So what I wanna do first is, um, let's just kind of take a look at some of the products that they're offering, all right? So uh, I'm not gonna worry about women's right now. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at women's, all right? So, um, all right, so let's see by category. Um, let's start from tops down. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Or um, actually, you know what? Let's make this even more fun. What do you buy the most from Biore? Bottoms, tops? What, what? Bottoms. I have Bottoms. pants by them. They, actually, they first started off, I know, mm -hmm. as just shorts. Oh, okay. They were just shorts, and uh -huh. then obviously they built a brand, and more right. people you know, wanted, right. they wanted tops to go with it and they wanted okay. outerwear and they wanted... Right, so you know what, Let, let's cover let's cover the bottoms first then, okay? okay. So bottoms right here, as you can see right now, I, I just did like a brief look uh, through this line uh, before we started. So right now the bottoms, um, they're priced out somewhere anywhere between 84 to $115, mm -hmm. okay? That's their long bottoms. Yes, I'm talking long bottoms yeah. very specifically right now, okay? So let's take a look at their pants. I call it bottoms, they call it. Actually, I have this right here. Oh, is this the one you got? Sunday Performance? Yep. Okay, so, oh, oh, nice, you brought it, you brought it. This is the Performance Tracker? Yeah. All right, so. Dude, it's um, soft as butter. Okay, yeah, oh wow, this is like, this is poly stretch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is just pure polyester. Okay, so you know what, I'm gonna click it here so we can look at what it is, all right? So first things first, what I wanna say is, um, you could tell that this is like their, um, uh, their main bottoms, just, based on the, the sheer amount of colors that they're showing uh, within yeah. the performance jogger, okay? And this is their opening price point of 89 bucks. Um, but as you could see, kind of, you know how we had that color presentation on a couple weeks back yeah. about like the new like up and coming like fall colors mm -hmm. for this year? You can kind of see like, I mean, they're pretty much on trend when it comes to like color. So yeah. it's, um, first off, it's a very basic silhouette. Uh, it's a knit jogger. Yeah, so this is a knit. It's not a woven fabric, so it's not really a hard piece. Um, this is an interlock fabric. It's a double knit. Okay, cool. And then, um, as you can see, this is our core item because they're showing so many colors. Now, um, I, I think uh, one of our previous episodes, we kind of talked about, you know, if you can, um, like find like a segment of like when, we're, when I'm talking about how like I put together a colorway, put it here. <laughs> Am, I pointing it? <laughs> Am I pointing it at the right place? Put it here. Yeah, I don't know where they put it. Yeah, but the link, yeah. yeah. Put it here. Wherever YouTube wants it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, wherever YouTube wants to put it, yeah. So, um, yeah, like, um, let's, let's throw a link on there on how to pick out the colors. And I'll, I'll give a brief recap about, like, how I merchandise color is basically you have your core colors, just mm -hmm. like the same way they do, which is your charcoal, your black. No, that's, I think that's a new color. Okay, but, like, charcoal and black. I think, I think those are the colors. You need some kind of brown, blue shade. So okay. Like a navy. Or yeah, so they have indigo. They call it indigo. Okay, so this is their blue shade, but at the same time, what they're doing right now is they're electing to go with like a pop blue because yeah. this is like a traditional navy. But yeah. maybe this is their core navy. It doesn't really matter. You need some kind of green shade, which they do not have here, which is interesting. Some kind of warm color, which is like a red. Mm -hmm. So you have their oxbud and some kind of pop color, and they're electing to do their uh, tobacco. Yeah. They're calling it tobacco. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they got real fancy with it, and they threw in a... They, threw in, a, they yeah. threw in a print. Yeah. But like this is what I'm saying right now with like athleisure right now is like they do a they do a shit ton of color multipliers, a very, very simple body. Mm -hmm. And and 
they, you know, like, I mean, prints usually dominate like a fashion line, but here it's just like one or two prints. Yeah. And that's enough because when someone buys this, they're not gonna be buying it for this specifically. They're gonna be buying it for um, just like the fabric. Exactly. And let, let's talk the fabric right now. If you could see here, fabric details, 88 poly, 12% elastin. So this is like pretty much like the base fabric for most like poly stretch stuff. Yep. Uh, very, very elastic heavy. Um, it's like beefy. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, what kind of separates? I mean, obviously, it's constructed a lot better than like some other competitors. You know, mm -hmm. like what separates? It? It's tighter. It's tighter. Yeah. You feel it? It's tight. Yeah. yeah. You know, and like like you said, it's beefier. So. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, like, the cool thing about Viore and, like, once you get to, like, these higher-end stuff, it's it's not always necessarily beefier. Mm -hmm. Like, beefier to, like, a lot of consumers is always necessarily better, but, like, in this case right now, they, they it's fairly lightweight, mm -hmm. but what they do is they might use a thinner yarn, but they pack it in yeah. like crazy, so it's really tight. Yeah. So it doesn't, even though it's thin, it doesn't feel sheer. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a way more expensive way of doing it. We can't do this shit yeah. because our price points are so low. Mm -hmm. That's why we always go for the beefy route. Yeah. You get what I mean? But mm -hmm. if we could do this kind of shit, like that'd be great. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah, well, I mean, we'll kind of get into like their business model mm -hmm. uh, later down. But as you can see here, their features. Yeah. Moisture wicking, quick drying, four-way -week, four stretch. Yeah. Like that's, this that's is. What, that's what they're, they're highlighting. Right, like, so, yeah, so this is crazy because like, you know, when, you, when you're going through this e-commerce page, this doesn't, this doesn't read like an act, I mean, it, I guess it sort of does. But like, it's, um, you know, it's like, this feels very like sophisticated and it feels like a fashion line, but then at the same time you kind of go in here and then you kind of get hit with this whole like athleisure language, yeah. you know? So like, I mean, with bottoms, so they have the Sunday Performance Jogger, they have the Pronto, let's let's see what fabrication this is. This is... That's probably the same. This is the recycled version. So this is their sustainable play. Yeah. You kind of get what I mean? And so it's like, it, I, I guess they're mostly, oh, look at this. They have ripstop. That's, that's the jog, joggers I have. Well, that, that's the pant. Mine's the jogger. I have right, that the, and jogger. Okay, so like, yeah, so they also have a ripstop fabric, which is, yeah, so I mean, this is kind of what we got, yeah. you know, like this is, um, yeah, so yeah, so like that's very similar to the quality that we have. I mean, there's this organic, I guess, but yeah. So you know what? Let me go to yeah, best sellers. Let's see what else they got. So they got that's the Meta Pen. Is that what it is? That kind of looks like our uh, our new let's, tech jogger. Let's see. This is 100% polyester. Wow, they put no stretch in this, huh? Hmm, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, but. Oh, no, that. they do. No, they do. It's a mechanical stretch. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's 100% polyester. Mechanic. This is what our dress shirt's kind of like. Okay. Yeah, so what they do is instead of using spandex, what they do is they use really, really pliable poly. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. It works. I mean, it's um, it's it's legit. It's for sure legit. Um, yeah, but as you can see, anti-odor, moisture wicking, quick dry. For oh, my God, this is everything that we talked about. Yeah. The only thing that they're missing is the waterproof. But, like, yeah, so that's the Meta Pant. Um, this looks like their core woven one. This is 98 bucks. Like so, hundred bucks basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get into the price later. Um, I'm just I'm just scrolling through this really quick because I just want to see all the um, I want to see what kind of fabrics they use. This is another type of fabric that they have. It's um, let me see what this is. This is also a knit. It's ninety one nine poly. So poly it seems like more like their joggers are a poly stretch, whereas more of their kind of yeah. Look, I mean, like they're they're they're, they're highly they're, focused they're, on poly. Their pants more. It's higher content in either cotton or just poly. You know, I, you know what? I don't, I don't think it's really like that. It's like, I mean, because even for me too, because you know we're getting into bottoms right now. Yeah. Like most brands, like I, I think this comes from the need to do more business and more volume. Mm -hmm. But it's like once you find a polyester pant, what you want to do is the next, the next fabrication that you add, you want to show as much diversity as possible. You know, like you could have like ten different types of polyester fabric. Mm -hmm. The consumer is only going to buy one. Yeah. You know, you only need one poly pen. Mm -hmm. And then and so what they're probably gonna do is they're gonna do, okay, we have this poly stretch like baseline like tech jogger knit, right? Yeah. So what they're gonna add is they're gonna add like a poly woven bottom, mm -hmm. you know, which was the one that we just showed, like the meta yeah. or whatever. You know, that's the poly woven. Do you have another bottom there? Yeah, I got my I got my rip stop. Oh shit. Why didn't you bring this out when we were doing rip stop? I totally forgot. I just yeah. remembered. I got, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, my, yeah. I do have my rip stop. Yeah, yeah. So then you have the rip stop because and then what they want to do is they want to add cotton. Yeah. Okay, so we gotta do a cotton, but Dude, they want I can't find the freaking and yes, but the details tag where it would say the where it's made and everything. I think I yeah, think well, it, it's like it's like Lulu where you had yeah. it and you rip it off. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, we could go over that later. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so it's like yeah, but then, and so then they want to add a cotton. You get what I mean? And this yeah. is kind of how they build out their whole uh, they build out the whole line. But mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Oh, I guess they don't have it anymore. Maybe, oh, is it? No, that looks like a knit. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe they got through with it, but like you know, like so they have rip, they have ripstop as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like they have, they have a pretty decent assortment of bottoms. Ripstop so. jogger. Oh shit! Is that the one? Yeah, is this I have the one. Is this yeah, that? Yeah, it's that. I have it in both. Oh shit! No that's kidding. That's the dark. That's the olive one I have. They call it oregano, but the first one right there, that's this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So ninety-eight to mm -hmm. um, poly cotton. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So like I said, it's like you know, like oh yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I, okay, so they have, they have a pretty decent assortment of bottoms. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's one, that's one that you could see eighty four. So eighty four to one hundred fifteen bucks. Yep. I mean, it doesn't seem like too too big of a commitment. So all right, so bottoms. Now let's go to their clear all. I want to see. I want to see their shirts category. Yeah. Now I want to go to. I just want to briefly go over shorts just to see what they got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, let's see what kind of shorts they're looking at. Fabric details, poly, poly elastin, you know, recycled poly. You could clearly see that they're doing this sustainable play. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, basically all the processes on it. So that's their core, 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 core. Look at this. You see the way the colors are merchandised? They mm -hmm. have a red, they have a blue, they have a pop blue, mm -hmm. they have a pop color, you know, you know, turmeric. <laughs> Ginger biscuit. You know, and like like I said, it's like, oh, oh look, they have two different prints here. They got the, they actually have the a camo. Decent, decent amount of prints in their shorts. Because oh. they want they want yeah. to make them more kind of like, uh, almost yeah. like hybrid. Yeah. So you can wear them even swimming. Right, or right, we're gonna get to those. Oh, so they call this the slub, but this is definitely printed. That is not a regular slub. Yeah, so this is, the, so they printed the Check slub. The fabricate, is it the same fabrication? Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, yeah it's the okay. same. Yeah, so they printed this shit. Okay, so it's not really up. Okay, so let's keep going. Core short, core short. Banks short. I wonder what the fabrication is here. Fabric details. Same fabrication, different mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like yeah, for that the- one, That one has more of a, a scallop look. Right, it's, right. It's yeah, so core, it. bank, yeah. We call those dolphin shorts. Tomato, they, tomato. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I mean. All right, so banks, banks. Oh, and, and then they have different inseams. Yep. All right, so first off, let me just say this too, is like, man, they have a lot of different SKUs. I don't I don't know how I feel about that. Like, you know, I, I know there's like a five inch inseam guy. I got that right there, the Ponto short. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you brought it with you? Dude, it is nice. This is the softest short I've ever felt. Almost. Okay, this is a knit. Okay, yeah, so I, I think all the other ones were uh, woven, woven shorts. Mm -hmm. This is a knit short. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels really thin. It is, this is like my- go No, but it's this tight. Is, yeah, but this like, is my go-to like sleeping short. It is so comfortable. Sleeping short? Okay, because yeah. I was gonna be like, can you like see everything? No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm a little worried. Oh, no. Yeah, because no. it's like, okay, well, yeah, well, I mean, I this is, this no, is a big can't. one. Yeah, so like 74 bucks, seven and a half inch inseam. Okay, that's pretty good. Look at, look at all the colors they got on this bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's a lot of colors. Yeah. You know, so it's like, that's a big one for them. Ponto. Okay, so so they had, um, so they have the woven shorts, which is made with some recycled poly mm -hmm. and still pure poly play, two different bodies in that. Yep. They have this ponto short, which is their knit, knit bottom. Mm -hmm. And then they have this trail short. Let's look at the trail short. The trail short has polyelastin. Okay, yeah. so, this, so this is just another type of poly. Maybe this is their base price. Short, yeah, 68 bucks, I think. Yeah, so that, yeah, it's pretty much, they have a compression short, I'm not gonna look at that, and they have a cotton, they have a cotton short. Yeah. Which is the ripstop. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Okay, cool. So overall, climber short, climber short, Stockton short. Okay, and they have this novelty body. I'm not gonna really pay much attention to that. Vital short, which is another like fleece, heavier knit. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I mean, like, they got, they got, a, they got a decent amount of selections. Like, yeah, a lot. Yeah, they do. They do. They have a lot. I mean, my only thing, like I said, too, it's like, like for me, it's like, you know, like we have a lot of fabrications that are running bottoms. Right now, I'm strategically only doing one body per fabrication. Mm -hmm. Like these guys are, I think, maybe maybe it's because they're big enough. Like they, well, they're, you know, I'll, they're, yeah. I'll say I've been, I mean, I've been following them because my yeah. buddy's like, dude, you got to check out Viore. They, yeah, yeah. It's better than Lulu. So I, they didn't even, I remember they was just more of the core colors and yeah. like have like a couple of like sure. fashion colors and mm -hmm. what's happening. But yeah. like. Now they're really, really blown up because I think they've just 
accrued a, a bigger following and people... Yeah, I mean, they seem to be stuff. doing pretty well. I mean, I know who they are even, yeah. you know? So it's like, yeah, and I'm not in this world, you know? So uh, let, let's go into, um, let's start going into some of the tops now. I'm just gonna click all the tops total so we can kind of look at it. All right, so sort by, all right, shit. Let's go by, let's go price. All right, I'm, I'm avoiding all the markdowns. I don't really care for the markdowns. I don't really wanna get into it. I wanna get in, let's start looking at these. Okay, so this is their opening price point for their knits online, it's 42 bucks. Dude, this looks like a gym t-shirt. Like, you know, like, yeah, it's very Equinox. Yeah. With like the text and everything, it's um, polyelastin. Yeah. This is, you know when, uh, like this is gonna be a bit of a tangent, but you know before, um, you know the reason, like I know athleisure is a big deal in women's. Mm -hmm. Now tights are like replacing all bottoms almost. Like you yeah. know, it's like, like, I, like I, I, all my girlfriends are requesting me to make heavy duty tights yeah. that they could wear every single day. Like everywhere, really? like tights are. I think it's going to replace denim at some point for women's. I feel like because it's just it's more like, comfortable. Yeah, it's just more comfortable, and everyone really likes it. Yeah. And so I know athleisure just dominates the women's market. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for me, the biggest reason why I am not a huge fan of athleisure for men is because they try to make this shit happen. Mm -hmm. Poly knits. Yeah. You're a big athleisure guy. Do you wear poly knits? Honestly, like. No, only when I work out. Do you wear poly knits when you work out? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, like, what kind of workouts? Like, like to the gym? Like when you you wear poly knits? Yeah. Doesn't it's just, the, it's just it's just it it just it's moisture wicking better and it kind of yeah because like like for me it's like I like I don't know I don't like poly knits really I yeah, like I, mean, I I feel like that's a big thing for me but like I I, I need to I need to get more I mean, feedback honestly, from other people I probably wear I'm more, wear more tank tops and it's it's a cotton tank top yeah like I mean like because I feel like for knits in general like because it's like. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep looking through this because I'm, I'm curious if all of their all of their tops are. Look at this, more poly. Yeah. You know, this is poly as well. Um, 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 knits, knits, and strato. strato I mean, it's definitely strato. softer to the touch. Okay, like the rise tee. Let's look at this one here. That almost looks like a slub. Yes, it, this is cotton. Nice. So this is yeah. Well, they call it Pima cotton, but I don't really give a fuck what kind of cotton it is. So their their first or their opening price point cotton fabrication is a slub. Yeah, you know, with a with a pocket ringer neck. I mean, they're trying to make it fashion, so it's like yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But yeah, so that's pretty much like the rise tee. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Like yeah. that's the Zephyr Muscle tee. I wonder what fabrication this is. It is. It's more poly. poly. Yep. It's more poly. Trade win, this That's is poly, poly too, for, for sure. sure. It's called the performance tee, so. Yep, more poly. Um, well, you know, their their knits are not nearly as cleanly merchandised as their, um, what the hell is C-Cell? <laughs> Some sustainable play. Made from seaweed. Oh, made from seaweed, wow, so this is. Oh. Seaweed and wood pulp. What yeah. the heck is wood pulp? It's like bamboo. No. Yeah, it's just, they're, they're just getting just, fancy with yeah, it. No, no, but like, still, like, this is what I'm talking about, like hemp, bamboo, like yeah. all these like natural, other natural fibers, oh, yeah. or, or, or cotton alternative, uh, alternate like yeah. natural fibers, like that's like this huge thing. This is interesting. Yeah, and they throw a little like, this is cool. I actually like this a lot, but like I said, it's like 48 bucks. Like, I mean, who could buy a $50 t-shirt, even though this is actually a pretty good one. Trade Someone who goes to Equinox? Yeah, I guess, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. Green, Green juice bros? Green juice. I'm a purple beet juice man. Yeah, you're like the worst. <laughs> you're the <laughs> fucking worst. I'm an awaken bro. <laughs> Says the guy with the man bun right now. Bro <laughs> Broken in tea. <laughs> okay, wait, first off, you see this? This is kind of like what I'm saying right now, like with regards to this whole like athleisure thing also kind of being like a fad is like, this is 100% cotton. Yeah. But they put four way stretch in here. So it's not all the way, it's not 100% cotton. Well, I mean, if you, I mean, it's stretch, but. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I guess that's what they're doing. But like, yeah, either way, like, so they, they carry tops. I'm actually surprised at how many different types of uh, fabrications that they're carrying for their tops because um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how much volume they actually do with tops. 
Yeah. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure vast majority of their um, or volume comes from bottoms. Just seeing how much, how much cleaner mm -hmm. uh, their, um, their bottoms have been merchandised. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I mean, again, they didn't have yeah. this many shirts when they first started out, but I yeah. think since they've just been growing look, as I, a brand, and, and, and they're just trying to, yeah. they're and, trying to complement all the amount of shirts they have right, with Right, right, yeah, because they're trying to grow their business. I understand that too. But I mean, at the same time, too, it looks like there's more than there actually is because what they're doing is like, they put, like, they, they, put, they put each individual each color on it. Yeah, yeah, right, you know what I mean? So they're displaying it. But I'm thinking right now, too, it's like they probably have about as many fabrications as we do. Like, yeah. if, if we make an e-commerce site with all of our t-shirts on here like this, oh my that gosh. list is gonna be we scroll, you be scrolling for a whole big. day. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> fucking big, man. It's it's not. Yeah. So, well, l let's go into jackets and hoodies. So, oh, I let's think keep, I might go to buy that. That's only thirty five bucks. It's on sale. Yeah, I know. it's on sale. It's probably that color. That's the problem. But like, yeah, I'm, let's let's see what everything else is. All right, let's go low to high. Okay, cool. Low to high. Jeffrey's pullover, so of course all the fleeces in the front. Let's see what the pullover is made of. This is... Sure, poly. Oh, no. Nope, oh, cotton, oh, poly. Oh, cotton poly. Cotton poly. Cotton poly. Poly, I, I don't know how to say it, but that's polyester, bro. Yeah. Yeah, um, so performance half zip. Definitely He's performance. Definitely poly. You think it's poly? Yeah. You're right, poly elastin, which is the same fabric that this is yeah this like these are yeah yeah so it's basically they're doing like hookups yep. so typically for me it's like the reason why like you typically like bottoms businesses like people who are like specialized in bottoms they do a lot of like fleece and outerwear in a big way is because they they share fabrications yeah you know what i mean so all you really got to do is add more but like they do windbreakers which is great more poly ripstop jacket i think that's a great idea you know what i'm going to click this really quick for my own personal research i want to see if they put stretch in this and they do, so they use the same fabric. Interesting, okay, cool. That's the rip stop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so all of this stuff, oh, they have a puff, puffer jacket. I mean, pretty much, they're, they're in basically all hard piece categories. Hard piece yeah. definition is outerwear, bottoms, yeah. stuff that aren't soft in the inside. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that they do, like, um, they, they're trying to break into like the button downs, like the wovens, but they only have one, one style. Oh, two styles. Oh, wait, this is more than I thought. Oh no, one's a short sleeve and long sleeve. Yeah, so, ace button down. That's expensive. No way, hold on. This isn't even unwoven, this is a knit. This is a coat front knit. It's a PK. Yeah, so this is a coat front knit even. Huh. Yeah, it's a performance PK. So yeah, so yeah, so they're not doing any, they're not doing any woven soft pieces, okay? Yeah. All right, so I mean, we did like a deep dive on the uh, the products. Um, yeah. If you want to see the price points, I did the work ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, it's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Okay, um, and like, you know, I kind of like, and so now the next step is since we're on their website, let's kind of look at some of their features. One of the things that you guys pointed out when we were doing the um, the whole review. Yeah. I really like this concept, shop by activity. I think it's cool. I think it's pretty cool. It's like really it, it's very targeted. Towards. Yeah, it, it gives like a very active feel, and mm -hmm. this is like, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, where it's just like they're, they're like it, it's very if it get like it's an active vibe because shop shop by activity. This is the way they're they're merchandising right yeah. now. You kind of get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Dude, I wonder what travel is. This is such a wanderlust fucking thing. I wonder what the, the meta pan. I think a lot of their products they go into different activities again it's just of course of course I, I would too yeah like so you see i love this meta pant concept mm -hmm. this is actually really cool it'd be really cool if we could get a core fabric like this and just like kind of run it yeah um i think the meta pant was pretty awesome when i saw it too it's like the mechanical stretch poly one i remember that mm -hmm. um like yeah i'm gonna yeah rips up climber pant which is weird that they put it in there because i would thought think that would oh they don't have anything for it okay Huh, interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I mean, it's mostly t-shirts, rip stuff. So basically travels, this is where they put dump, dump all their cotton shit. Mm -hmm. You know, all this is their cotton play. So like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it makes sense. And then... Uh, and all the poly poly stuff is gonna be more of the active. Yeah, all the, all the running, active stuff, right, training. right. Swim, yeah. you know, all of that. So it's, um, yeah, so they have this shop by activity feature, which is really cool. And then um, on top of that too, they have a community place where it's basically, this is kind of where they blow up all their digital content. Mm -hmm. And so let's see what kind of digital content that they put in besides the social media. So community, it's a, we are, oh, okay, so they, they, tell, they tell you uh, how sustainable they are. Yeah. You know, uh, where, they're, where they're 
What two is this called? They don't tell you where it's coming from, but they just tell you it's, it's certified organic, which yeah. basically means they tell the, their factory to source it, and yeah. their factory could cheat whenever they want to, but let's just pretend that that never happens. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so uh, they have the sustainability, lets you know that you know they care. Um, they have their journal, and I think this is pretty cool. Let's see what they're talking about. Um, okay, this is pretty- It's kinda like a, their blog. Yeah, yeah, Locals Guide to Malibu, California. The rise, the shine. Oh, okay, so this is uh, featuring, featuring their brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, more, the rise, the shine, that's what they call it. That's what VR stands for, the rise, the shine. Oh, really, okay, yeah, but this, like, this is like their brand ambassador features. This is like their trans talk. Yeah. Or this is like their, Spotlight. Yeah. Or this is it's like, like their, their weekly content that they're putting out. Or, or off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. And then, okay, so the rise, the shine, which is they, they highlight their ambassadors. Mm -hmm. The local guide, which they invite their locations. And social, con like, like, and then support, support whatever. And so they have, um, they have like a social awareness page. Yeah. Oh, and they also have like workout guides, which is pretty cool. I wonder how often they post. Let's see. Let's see the shit. This is posted September 7th. This is posted September 1st. Mm, so they're going, they're going weekly. Aug no, August 11th. Uh, so there, there was a bit okay. of a gap. So July 23rd. Yeah, so I'm thinking right now like maybe once or twice a month. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking like once or twice a month that they're posting, which is good. I mean, that's that's pretty solid, man. Like it's um it's it's hard doing this shit, you know? For sure. This is why we don't do this shit cuz it's hard. <laughs> Yeah, but it's um, it's pretty cool that they have this whole community page, and then uh, our story. They want to let you know that um, they care. Ethical manufacturing, community sustainability, um, and then move. Qual. Oh God, quality. You, you know my t you know my stance on quality. <laughs> and, like you know every single brand that is above like that sells like forty dollar t shirts. Yeah. Every single one of them has a quality blurb. Yeah. Every single one of them do. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and it's like, and, and then these people hire fuckers like me to work for them. And you know me, I'm just gonna be like, eh, okay, it's you know. It's not that much. Yeah, so, yeah, but um, what's the ACTV club? Oh, look at this, they're doing. Act active club, it stands for active, right? <laughs> I think so, right? Yeah, I think it does. It's active, but yeah. without, without any of the. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, so like they're, they're doing without this. Without any vowels. This, this is a. Uh, Hit, bro. Hit. Do you hit? I don't. <laughs> I'm a straight frat workout. It's just freaking wasting yeah, yeah, above. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, drink your bro team. The three by ten, bro. The three by ten. You're chasing just, the hyper just, trophy. Just pumping yeah, yeah. dumbbells arm, yeah, yeah. arm farm every day, dude. Arm farm. Oh, my God. <laughs> dude, I love this. Arm farm. Dude, I'm, I'm going to start saying that. Have you been arm farming, bro? Oh, arm, it's arm farm every day, dude. Yeah, but like I know, I know Aloe does shit like this. They like yeah. Aloe was doing this in a big yeah, way. I think I, I think Aloe, they're way heavily involved in the brand ambassador stuff. Yeah, like, right. That's where they kind of yeah. separate themselves from these other yeah athleisure brands. Is right. they are heavily in the brand ambassador. Right, right. I mean, so Kendall yeah. Jenner is one of their main ambassadors. Oh, is he? Oh yeah. Is she? Oh she. yeah. My bad. I didn't mean to uh, misgender, but Kendall, yeah. Kendall, not yeah. I, no, not, I know, no, no, I know, I know. Not is Caitlin, she, not Caitlin. No, 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 no. Is she? No, I'm. <laughs> fuck. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So um, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So um, yeah. So uh, we just did a deep dive on their website. They yep. seem to have a lot of shit covered. Now, do we have country of origin anywhere on these? Dude, I couldn't find it. I think on it, like, any like of I them? said, it was on the it was on the rip tag. Yeah. And it's like the Lulu kind of deal where you just like. Rip it off. All right. I got yeah. a tank by them. If you could find one, let me know. Yeah, yeah. They, they might have it on the side. I feel like they would yeah. have it. Yeah, on the side. This no. is flipped inside out already. Yeah, no. No, they, they don't. don't have it. No, they don't. All right. Well, you know what? My guess is, my guess is right now, I'm going to go on a wild guess. I think all this shit is either made in like Taiwan or China. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking right now um, for two reasons. One, uh, I'm gonna say like 90% of the line uses synthetic fibers, yeah. synthetic yarn. Uh, if it's if it's that much synthetic yarn, um, like the like the best place to get this in terms of quality and price would be China. And uh, not only that, it's like they put stretch and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that too, based on their price points, it doesn't not it doesn't look like they're moving big volume. 
I mean, they're, they're a big name, but I don't think they do big volume. But I mean, we could keep going into like the deep dives and we'll, we'll get into that once we go into the business part of it. But I'm guessing it's probably gonna be China. Um, yeah, but anyways, um, yeah. So, I mean, we saw a lot of their content. Um, let's kind of look, do a quick glance at their social media shit because um, I, I wanna see this. Um, yeah, so it's like a lot more workout stuff. It's very, it's very uh, female focused. Makes sense because um, literally, um, you know in the fashion industry in general, it's like an 85 to 15% split. 85% of the total volume for, for apparel goes to women. Yeah. Like, men just don't shop as much. That's the whole thing. But like, yeah, I mean. We're simpler beings. I mean, we'll get to that too because it's um, when we get to like the final thoughts. But um, yeah, I mean, it's more or less the same shit. It reads, yeah. like, it reads like an athleisure site. They're, you know, their font, their type, it looks very, um, yeah. And, Do you uh, ever wear that stuff casually out? Oh yeah. 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 Do they have pictures of that though? It's more mainly like active, right? It's more, more yeah. You I know mean, what, let me, let me look. That's actually a very good question. I mean, I saw one guy, his guy was like sitting on a deck on a beach, like by the well, beach. Oh, yeah, or... I feel like it's like more beach wear actually. Well, I mean, yeah, they're, Viore Vior, Vior is based in Encinitas, so they kind of are meshing like the, I wouldn't say surf vibe, but just, yeah. No, I look guess, at this. I, look I, at this. I, you know, yeah, look, it's beach vibe look at for this. sure. Very, uh, very jet setter. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you know, travel. And... Hashtag wanderlust. Um. Yeah, like these guys. Yeah, look at this. Sitting you know, on top of you know, standing on a car, yeah, looking yeah, at the waves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that set, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Let's see what else they got. Yeah, but you know, I mean, you know, they're really pushing the active aspect, though. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. It's like th this doesn't really feel like. Um, yeah, I mean, look at this. Like this feels very. Um, that's that, that's that same model. That was oh my before. god, you're right. Yeah, I told you. You're not kidding. I told you, dudes everywhere. Sportswear, athleisure, clothing. And then that guy, I always that guy's. Uh, that guy advertises my sunglasses, rain sunglasses. There he is. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. There he is. Fuck, you're not kidding. Dude, you got a good eye for models. <laughs> Fuck's that supposed to mean? All right, all right, anyways, um, okay, so yeah, so I mean, they're in. You're just looking at for the clothes? Uh, yeah, well, no, it, it's, for, it's for a smile. <laughs> He likes to smile. So yeah, um, yeah. But either way, uh, Viore, um, let's look at their live feed a little bit. New post, guys. Check out our shit. All right. Um, so there's that. You know, I saw the Twitter page. I just kind of wanted to take it. I don't even have a Twitter. <sighs> yeah, I know. I do. I don't. I don't know who needs to hear this, but only wearing Viore joggers is a form of self care. Breaking news: The CDC strongly wear, recommends wearing your Viore joggers to work. That's comedy. PSA, mental health is health. So yeah, they're just- Viore they're, Olympics, which part? So I mean, they, you know, they got this, um, yeah. They're, they're on the uptrend of yeah, like, yeah. what's going on. Right. Current, current events that are right. going on. Right, right, they want to let you know how woke they are. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so, okay, that's cool. I mean, what Viore items are you traveling with this summer? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty, oh my God. This is disgusting. I gotta retweet this. All right, shit, sorry. Look at this. That shit would definitely be a New York Fashion Week though, at some point. Oh my god, that is disgusting. Is, is it Fashion Week going on right now? Oh, I have no clue, man. I think it is. Please ask me if I work in this industry or not. I, I have no idea, man. I, I just follow this one influencer who's who's there. No. Uh, all right. Well, all right. Either way. Okay. So after we doing all this digital deep dive, now let's talk about what market are they targeting? Okay. Me. Um. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So I mean, I think uh, this like after kind of looking at everything right now, and we kind of touched on this briefly um, earlier on in the on these videos as well, but it's like. When it comes to like the market they're targeting, it's mm -hmm. um I, I I can't emphasize enough like this is this is a brand new market. Yeah, it's brand new. I know it sounds people have been talking about athleisure for a while now, but we've only been talking about it for a decade. Yeah, you know, and um, I still don't think anyone's really got it right yet. 
And if and you know what, and honestly, if Yore and Lululemon is the depth of where this is going to go, mm -hmm. like it's um, like first off, this this whole thing hasn't trickled down to our market. No, in the value chain, it hasn't. No. Like right now, it's like if we were to introduce to our buyers currently right now some poly knits, mm -hmm. or we were to introduce mm -hmm. this, you know what they would all automatically say? They're like, oh, the active the active buyer buys it. Yeah. You know, and it's not you know, and and it's um. I think with these guys like Viore and yeah. Lulu, it's like they're targeting a, a specific demographic who has money, who ha is willing to spend right. top dollar on clothes right. that are both you can wear every day and you can work out in. Right. So I mean, so we don't. I don't think they want to go to the discount route where they would sell for a lot cheaper. Like, well, that's their whole. Well, here's here's my whole thing. It's like I mean, for them, it's like. Like I'm not really worried about them. I'm I'm talking about this whole industry in general or yeah. this market in general. Yeah. Like cuz right now it's like like if like we we came up with this term ourselves like yesterday, the affluent coastal wellness minded community. Yeah. Um like <laughs> and this this community is is almost 90% all millennials. Yeah. You know, like it's it, this is a total millennial movement. Like it's our movement, so to speak. Like this is like this and probably like streetwear are like our two yeah. biggest contributions right now to like the fashion market. Yeah. You know, like we like our like the suits, then the clothing and all of that, like that died with our generation, I think. Like it's like I like I don't know when suits are gonna be cool again. I mean just for specific events, weddings and Right, yeah, like where it's traditional. But yeah. like it's like I mean like like if you see a dude at the bar wearing a suit. You think he's weird? Yeah, you're gonna look at me like, what the fuck? Yeah, like it's like, where are you from? Yeah. Like you know, like I mean, it's like you're European for sure. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like no, you know, that stigma is changing. Yeah, like yeah, it's completely changing. Yeah. And like I think I, I think that has a lot to do with this whole athleisure thing coming in, and where it's like you're like if you take fashion too seriously, yeah, you know, like people look at you funny, you know, yeah. like you know, and it's like that's kind of a very millennial mindset. But then at the same time too, it's like you know, if you go to like Kentucky, you go to um. Where else? Like anywhere, anywhere, anywhere that's not coastal. You mm -hmm. kind of go inside. It's like no, nope, you don't see them wearing shit like this. No, I just because that's not. Yeah. Well, my question: Do you think they want to? Because I don't even know if they have enough. Like, they don't know where to buy this stuff. You know, I, that's why it hasn't perpetrated. Like it, it hasn't um, penetrated the value channel yet. You know, it's like where would they buy stuff like this even? You know, yeah. at, at these prices. You know, and that's something that like I think about a lot because like you know honestly like this costs more than two months at the gym. Yeah. No, seriously, you know, and so it's um that's kind of where um, like, like I I mean the market right now is very very specific, but it's just like I think. I think where this trend goes, it, it it's gonna like, we'll we'll touch on that later too. But like yeah, so it's like I mean the active millennial market that's yeah. who these guys are. All right, mm -hmm. distribution where are they selling? So we know that they have their own retail stores. Let's look at where their stores are. Our stores. So currently right now they have. Okay, here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten retail Smart stores. Yeah. They have ten retail stores. Okay, um, all of them: San Francisco, Santana Row, Newport, Manhattan, so Hampton, Malibu, areas. Encinitas, Del Mar, Abikini, and wellness-minded communities. And one in Boulder. With the exception of Boulder, all these places are beaches. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're along the coastline, affluent. Affluent neighborhoods, yeah, with very little diversity. <laughs> I could say that, right? Wonder Bread. Hey, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> you said that. All right, and they also have their e-commerce store, but like That's probably where they do the most. Okay, most so, of the business. all right. So let me do some quick math real quick. All right. So let's say uh, for like this right here. Let's say there's about like I mean let, let's look at how many sizes there are. Let's go to their bottoms. So let's see how many sizes they have. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sizes for shorts, let's say, and for tops, let's see. You know, I just want to see their tops. Like it's interesting. For some of them, they have like regular sizes, twenty-eight, yeah. but then they also do have size. I think this right. was a, I think this was a small yeah. or a medium. Yeah. So check this. Depends. So they have seven <laughs> sizes per bottoms, mm -hmm. and let's say like five sizes for uh, tops. Yeah. And so let's say like on average are like six different sizes, right? They have six sizes right now. So I'm guessing right now per store, what they'll do is they'll pay, probably carry like at most maybe like 24 pieces mm -hmm. per per SKU. Yeah. So like basically right now, when you look at their, um, they have 10 stores. 
So I'm thinking right now, what they'll do is they'll probably do like 500, 600 pieces mm -hmm. per, per style for production, mm -hmm. per, like per, per round, yeah. for the mm -hmm. retail space. Yeah. I'm going off of my head right now, Viore. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure your production 600 pieces for retail. Mm -hmm. And then for e-com, right, maybe right now, maybe they're selling maybe like, maybe they'll sell like 10 SKUs or 10 pieces per week. Okay. All right, so like per week, not not of each individual style, but just overall, yeah. everything on their e-com. So they're doing like ten pieces per week, um, times five, like times let's say like, and so maybe they buy twice a year, mm -hmm. which is I mean, which which is decent, decent size. So then that's like let's say like there's there's ten uh, there's nine nine weeks in two months, so like nine times. Three is twenty-seven times like ten. That's like around like two. So I'm guessing right now, like for like their top sellers, they might be in like the twelve hundreds mm -hmm. range. But then some like their production per style is probably going to be somewhere between six hundred to like twelve hundred pieces. Yeah. And then like maybe like one twenty to like three hundred for some of like their pop colors. Like that's pretty much like the like their size of production. Yeah. If they do only retail and e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So this is the, their private cuts. Now let's check out. Mm -hmm. Viori, let's see who else they sell to. They sell to Nordstrom's. Yep. This is great. Okay, so they're in Nordstrom's, they're in REI, and they're in High Country Outfitters. Okay, so they do they do some specialty store business. Back country for them. Yeah. So like, let's see, um, like Nordstrom's. Like right now, Nordstrom's has okay. Viori. Okay, so Nordstrom's buys it. They're selling for eighty four. But okay, so they're basically selling for the same amount. Yeah. This is like the worst part now. I could actually reverse it and I could get a good idea of what their actual costs are from like all this stuff. But I'm willing to bet you anything right now, no, like they are doing more volume off of their wholesaling right now than they are their e-commerce and their uh, retail. It's probably just, they're just in a wider range of customers. This is more stores. Yeah. More stores. Like, yeah. all right, so like, let's let's do this now. Um, yo, do you have your phone with you? Mm -hmm. Bust out your calculator, okay? So let's say uh, Nordstrom, Nordstrom. Nordstrom right now, it's a uh, store count. So they have 88. So write 88. Mm -hmm. 88 stores. Uh, let's go REI. Plus 165. Well, that was 220. It's REI in financial trouble, fuck. It's like the worst. All right, let's just let's just let's just use that yeah. as the basis. Um, okay. And then high country outfitters. I mean, this is probably a specialty store. Yeah. Like, let's see. Let's see how many they got. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, like not a lot, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So let's just say like, let's just round up. Let's do ten. Okay. That's ten. Okay. Two sixty-three total. Backcountry store. Official website. Um, I think backcountry is uh, strictly e-commerce. Oh, is it strictly yeah. e-commerce? Okay, so then that's an e-commerce platform. Yeah. Okay, so like for me right now, it's like if you, if you ca like calculate all that, how much? Two sixty three. Two hundred sixty three stores. Okay, I mean, you know what? They do decent business. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. They probably do some pretty decent business. Then, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, but it, you know, so at the same time, it's like, you know, but for them, it's like what they need to do is basically with all with all the the volume that they're doing from here, you know, um, maybe they have some kind of like I don't know if their training is free. You know, their coaching is free. Maybe mm -hmm. they, you got to pay to like train with them a little bit. Maybe they could get some from that membership there and everything. Yeah. But then the difficult thing for them is I don't, I don't, I don't know how healthy their company is in general right now mm -hmm. because when you kind of look at all the content that they're, they're making digitally with like the blog, with like the videos, with like yeah. the trainers and the ambassadors and all this stuff, all this stuff costs. For sure. You get what I mean? And so like for me right now, it's like with like two hundred stores right now. Is this? It's like I'm thinking right now. It's like. I think they're, I, 200 stores, say they buy like 100 each per quarter, you know, it's like, I don't, you know, I don't know if they're doing $10 million volume. I don't know. 
like I don't I don't know their I think I think they're around six million dollar volume. Okay. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't, but I don't know. Like, I don't know how big Biore really is. Yeah. You know, and like it's like I don't know what kind of profit that they're taking from that. You know, for they're sure. I mean they're making way more profit than we are. That's yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then at the same time they need more profit because they're doing so much marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, so much awareness. You know, everybody knows who they are. So I mean, we're let's um. I mean, shit, like, man, we've, we've been on for almost an hour, but, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we kind of... We don't need to research them. People know yeah, who that is. Yeah, yeah, Lulu, but, like... Lulu, Aloe, yeah, 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 so all of them, so, like, it's, um, yeah, so we kind of got their, like, competitors. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like, I think this is a good segue to kind of go into, like, our final thoughts of, like, Viore. Yeah. You guys asked me this question, like, yesterday, like, uh, where do we think Viore is going to be in, like, five years? Yeah. Is Viore a short-term play or a long-term play? Mm-hmm. And my answer to you guys was, it's complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like I, what's well, such a new? I, I, I don't know where athleisure is gonna go because for me right now, it's. Um, I think it's got a long ways to penetrate in like the women's market, mm-hmm. you know. But for men's, it's like, like, like I said, I, I just, I just re- really don't know the appeal for it. Like, cause men's, I feel like the play to go for them is mostly like workwear. Or like, or like, you know, like even like, or like Nike streetwear, or like you know Adidas, you know stuff like that, where it's just like you give like active vibes, but it's more like a cultural thing, you know. Yeah. And it's like, you know, um, you know, I'm just like not really sure. But like um, at the same time, though, I think athleisure is a real thing. I don't think athleisure yeah. is going to go anywhere. But at the same time, it, like I said, it's it's such a women's play. You know, and like people like Viore is like, I mean, you you love it, but how many of you are there? You know, it's like like people like you exist in LA, yeah. in SF, yeah. in New York. You know, I think it's definitely more progressive cities that are right on trend with right. what's new and right. what's, right. what's hot. So, right, but then but like, yeah, but yeah, you talk more of like middle of the U.S. They don't they don't know this shit. Look, look, man, like Michael Jordan said though. You know, even Republicans buy Nikes. He also, said, he also said the ceiling is the floor is the ceiling or some yeah. shit like that. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> but like yeah, but what the what ceiling I, is yeah. the roof? <laughs> yeah, we know, Michael. <laughs> yeah, but like like but this, but this is my whole thing. It's like it's um like in terms of like penetration. Like I think in order for this like athleisure as a movement to like really go in mm-hmm. is like is it's got to penetrate middle America. Yeah, it can't just stay coastal. I agree. There just isn't a, there isn't the amount of people mm-hmm. to support that to support a big volume for it to become like a real thing. Yeah, you know, streetwear hit a tipping point once, like, you see like weird people in like, and what are the middle cities? Name like Arizona. You see people in Arizona becoming hype beasts. You know, yeah. like that's kind of when like streetwear hit like a tipping point. I just don't know if, if leisure has that kind of pull. You know, um, maybe they want to stay niche and they don't want to be for the mass market. I don't know. I don't think they can stay niche at that volume. It's going to be harder. It's going to be harder because it's like, like, I think, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think it's going to be very difficult because, um, right now, especially like in China, um, like especially with this like freight situation and everything like that, like I, I think you could, they could really build a brand and stay with this kind of like, at this level of volume, they could really build here. But the thing is, it's gonna get harder and harder for them to do actual production. Like right now, I know China is like, they, they're still subsidizing a lot of fashion and they're doing a lot of stuff there for like the women's, like for women's in general. But like Viore right now too, it's like, I, you know what, and at the same time too, like what I'm talking about when I'm saying like six to like $10 million, mm-hmm. I'm talking strictly men's market. Yeah. Women's is a completely different beast. Mm-hmm. I, I like you know I'm, I'm I think Viore is way more wealthy than us, but I think that's also because they they have the women's to su- like supplement yeah. you know their market right now. You get what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. the women's is going to be a big thing, but then at the same time too, it's like you know like I, I just don't know like what athleisure looks like in like the men's market. Yeah, I think it's just it's, it's still you know? so new and it's yeah. kind of this it's kind of in the guinea pig stage. Yeah. So yeah, but you know what? I will leave this episode of uh, Spotlight with um, this quote that I found from my favorite designer. Um, I do have a favorite high-end designer because um, I do work in the industry. Is this dude named Rick Owens. So uh, before we kind of go into this, I kind of want to show you guys what kind of shit that Rick Owens actually designs. This is Rick Owens. Pretty eccentric looking dude. Yeah, so he he does all this couture shit, but like he's really into like 
You know, let me see if I can find, um, yes, let's go to Sax and look at Rick Owens shit for a second. Okay, like you see, even for him, he does all these, all these accessories, it's pure licensing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but let's go to men's, let's see what he got. Yeah, so he does like crazy shit like this, you know, it's, um, it's very like Yeezy-esque, very industrial, mm -hmm. very uh, matrixy, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's just completely off the beaten path. Well, yeah, sort of, but it's like a lot of leather, a lot of black, um, a lot of joggers, you know, like. A lot of different, like. A lot of zippers. Zipper hits. Yeah, like, like that. yeah, but like, you know, he he, ha he has this type of look, okay? Yeah. But um, I, like, it just kind of reminded me, like, I had to actually find this quote, but um, like, I think he said this in like the early 2010s or something like that, mm -hmm. and where um, he basically called this out. He said, working out is modern culture, no outfit is going to make you look or feel as good as having a fit body. Buy less clothing and go to the gym instead. This is a couture designer basically saying shit like this. Fashion's gonna, fashion will at some point die out. Well, fashion is, it is gonna mean less and less to the world as yeah. time goes on. Yeah. You know, and we're kind of seeing that right now. You know, it's like everyone's going to like cleaner silhouettes, you know, and yeah. it's like, and you know, I mean like flexing outfits becomes like a clean black shirt now, you know, or like a clean, you know, like that shit's clean is a term now, yeah. you know? And so yeah. it's like, I, I think um, I think athleisure in that sense is going in the right direction mm -hmm. um, or it is in the right direction. I just don't know if Viore or like Lululemon or all these other people who are, you know, like in this world, I just don't know if the way they're executing their lines is the answer, you know? Does that make sense? I will tell. Yeah. Fuck, we've been in this for a long time now. <laughs> oh man, this is exhausting. That was a good spotlight. It was, it was, yeah. we, we definitely did a deep dive. There, there's a lot to say and you know like, okay, but anyways, uh, do you have anything more to add to this? No. All right, thanks for uh, stopping in. Um, I'll uh, see you next week, man.